Hi, today I would like to walk you through some of the basic advantages of Delta Lake. You can interact with Delta Lake using Databricks Spark SQL tables or directly at the file level. Today, I will focus on the Delta Lake file with comparison to Parquet. Typically, you will use the Data Lake components with Spark to manage files on distributed storage, for example, on AWS S3 or the Azure Data Lake storage. We will look at topics such as schema evolution with Delta Lake, versioning, and time travel. So what is Delta Lake? Delta Lake is an open source storage layer that brings asset transactions to big data workloads. It's a storage format that is based on Parquet. It's designed to help you with things like asset transactions, metadata, data versioning, schema evolution, and more. Today, I want to focus on some Parquet limitations that Delta Lake can help you with. When you are writing data into Parquet, you create a folder. This folder is virtually immutable. You cannot append the files with more data or update specific fields with a new version of the data. Parquet best practices usually encourage creating new partitions and folders for different versions of the data and new files to perform joins of these versions. Another typical limitation is managing schema evolution with Parquet. If you introduce a new columns to Parquet and try to read it with the same consumer or hive table, you will encounter limitations. In this example, I'm writing two different batches into the same file. In the second batch, I'm going to introduce a new field, phone number. After writing two records with the first schema and appending a new record with a different schema, I'm going to be able to read a dataset with a single consumer. Mark, my first file has four columns and I'm writing it into a new data lake file called customers. My second file has a fifth column in the middle, phone number, and I'm writing it using the append function to the same file. Now I read that file once and you can see in the result I have the three records I've written. One of them has a phone number and the other two don't, but the consumer did not break even though the schema is different. So you can see how this helps you with schema evolution as your schema changes over time and you need to upload more data into the same data set without breaking the old records or changing the existing files. Another parquet limitation is versioning of the data. Typically, when your data is changing over time, best practices will recommend you to write the new version of the data into a new folder or partition. Later, if you want to create an updated version of the data, you need to run a merge process to have the current view. In this example, I'm going to load two records of the same customer, but in the second time I will load it, the city of the customer has changed. Now I run this job to load the two records into the same folder. When I read it normally, I will see both records are inside, so both versions of the data. If I want to go back and see only the first version of the data, I choose version 0 in my delta input component, and the result is I see only the record where the customer was in Chicago. Similarly, if I want to go back to the data based on a specific timestamp, I can use the time travel functionality and read only the records that were loaded up to a specific time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.